ವಂದೆ ಗುರುನ ಶರಣಾರವಿಂದೆ ಸಂಧರ ಶೀತ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮ ಸುಖಾಪಬೋಧೆ ನಿಶ್ರೇಯಸೆ ಜಂಗಲಿಕಾಯಮಾನೆ ಸಂಸಾರ ಹಾಲಾಹಲ ಮೋಹ ಸಂಧ್ಯೆ ಸಾರ ಶಿವೋಕ್ತಾನಿ ಸಪ್ತಾಲಕ್ಷ I was raised around music. When I was a baby, my mother taught piano lessons and used to put my crib next to her piano. Her love of listening to and playing music infiltrated my life deeply. As a child, I sang in the church choir, and at 18, after playing classical guitar for a few years, I began my journey as a music major with an emphasis in classical guitar and voice. My real love, though, was writing and playing songs with friends. Perhaps it's best not to say too much about it, but there were definitely moments while playing and singing in different bands, or in the crescendo of chorale when I experienced a deep inner bliss. Then and now I wonder, do these moments have to pass? The more I practice Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, the more I discover that sound and music are an important part of the practice too, and can be an especially sweet type of pranayama or life force alignment. Asanas themselves are perhaps a bit like different instruments, each one a shape that produces waves of energy, different sounds, and a tuning in. These instruments not only carry the waves of energy or prana, but are shaped by it as well. The better crafted the instrument, the better the breath that may pass through it, and vice versa. Yoga practice includes not just our instrument bodies, but more importantly, the musical life force that may support these forms and the dynamics of energy from piano to fortissimo that passes and fills them. Here, with a little luck, these prana-filled forms allow for symphonies with others to be created on and off the mat. Yet, it seems I and most of us often unintentionally escape and hide our breath away rather than clarify and fine-tune our instruments. I can remember in high school, my voice teacher, Mrs. Adams, say, if you're going to sing a wrong note, sing it loudly. Just like when we're on the mat, Miss Adams required a presence of mind and authenticity that is obscured when we are afraid of being seen or heard as the one struggling. Yet, even when we are given permission to expose our mistakes or to expose the cracks in our voices or bodies, this subtle hiding and attenuating is hard to get away from. Whatever tricks we employ to hide the breath, whether it's by taking breaks in the vinyasa, holding our breath a bit during the rough patches, or aiming to keep the breathing rhythmic without pause for over an hour, free, smooth breathing with sound is hard, real hard. In my practice space in the quiet, subtle mornings, I find opportunities to begin again, to cultivate the sine wave-like qualities of the inhale and exhale. There, my own instruments or postures are strung together and supported with the amplified breath and mind in solitude. In these still quiet mornings, I daily aim for free breathing with sound and the symphony of surrender it promises. In these moments, we may seek the subtle and cultivate listening to the innermost sound. The more we listen to this sound of our breath, and dare to telescope into the subtle cacophony of our own bodies, the more resilient we may become. And with the right intention, the subtle sweetness of our breath could be the best music we've never heard. So, pull up a mat, sit on the edge of your seat, and listen close. <laughs> 